Hello, just Jamie here. Thanks for checking out my latest emulation video. So before I start this video, I just want to say thanks for watching it and uh, thanks for all my subscribers you know, tuning in to watch my latest emulation videos. I do a range of different videos on my channel, music, tuition, obviously emulation, tuition, gameplay and modern games, so everything. So I need your support to upgrade the channel, as it were. I need new microphones, I need new backdrops, I can't keep going on using this. So I need a lot of stuff to enhance my channel to make it so much better. But anyway, uh, check out links in my description and enjoy the video, take care. Okay, so next up we have the Jupiter A. So thanks for everyone who did the vote on the community post the other day. Obviously we had Dragon32 in first place, which I've already covered, it's a tutorial. Next up we have the Jupiter A. So this one's even even more less known than say the Dragon 32. So the Jupiter Ace came out around 1982, sold just under 5,000 units and its programming language shipped with fourth. So whilst the rest of Britain was getting to grips with using basic, this one came in with fourth. It had one kilobyte of memory in it, that's RAM, and it ran on a Z80 processor, very similar to Sinclair computers. So as always, I've gone out of my way to find a very good emulator to support this video, and links in my description as always. And this is it. So we have Jupiter Ace Archive website, which is a very comprehensive website for this computer. So you have a range of different emulators or windows here, but by far from what I can see, Spud Ace is the best here. So this is going to support Windows XP 788.1. I presume this is going to support Windows 10 too, as I'm using Windows 11. So left click on this one. If we just go down a bit, I'm going to grab the current version, which is 1.02. And this is going to download into a zipped folder. And I'm going to just drag this onto my desktop. On my desktop, I'm going to just create a new folder. So right click and new and folder. And I'm going to just call this folder Ace. Uh, next up, I'm going to drag this, what I've just downloaded, into this Ace folder I've just created. Once we're inside, we're going to extract this. So what I'd use WinRAR to do this. Uh, you might use another extraction tool. So once this is extracted, we can now get rid of this zipped folder. And just to give you a heads up, you don't need to download a ROM file to run this emulator. If we just go into the ROMs folder here, we have got the ace.rom, so that saves you from looking for a needlewood haystack for such a forgotten computer. Um, so let's just open up Spud Ace, and here it is. So without the ROM file, this little pixel just here likely wouldn't exist, but that's up to you to test out if you really want to do that. So next up, what I'm going to do, I'm going to just create another folder inside of this Ace folder I've just created. And I'm going to call this one Games. And the good thing about this website, I found Jupyter Ace Archive, it has got tons and tons and tons of software, documents, uh, programming language, listings, you, you know, you name it. This website literally has it. So I'm going to download a game. And we can see here, under the memory, these games are ridiculously, ridiculously small. Uh, the one I'm choosing to use for this tutorial is by High Tech Microsoft, which is Ace Invaders. And this one's a relatively new game in terms of this computer, it's a 2004 release. So it goes to say that there is a community for homebrew games. If we just look down here, we've actually got a game from 2017. However, I'm going to be using Ace Invaders. And if you just look down further, it will even give you the loading instructions, how to load certain Jupiter games. Uh, some games needed different loading instructions. It was even going to give you the original inlay art for some of these games, and even the cassette scans, which are you know pretty cool. If you're into that sort of thing, I am. So, uh, <laughs> so let's download this game. So I'm gonna just click on the link here, left click. And this is going to download another zit file. And what I'm going to do is just open this one up. And we've got two files in here. So we've got two cassette tape files. You've got a tap file and a TZX file. So TZX files are more traditionally used with Sinclair Spectrum emulators. Whereas tap files are kind of universally accepted for most microcomputer emulators. So I'm going to go back into the ACE folder I've created and open up the games folder. 
and I'm going to just drag and drop both of these files into this folder. So we can close this window now. We no longer need this website either. But yes, the link's in the description to download yourself a copy of Spud Ace and some games. Okay, and we can also delete this zip file of the game I just downloaded. So that's about it. So just before I start showing you how to load software, if we go to tools and we go to options here, if we go to hardware, it's got four different models of the Jupiter Ace. So obviously 3K, 19K, 35. So if you download a game which requires more memory, say over 51K of memory, you're going to be selecting the 51K model. In my case, I'm just going to go for a 3K. That's what the game was on the download description as a 3K. If I press OK. So to load our game then, I'm just going to go to File. I'm going to go to Load File. And here we go. This is the directory of where my game is located. So I'm going to just simply double left click on the .tap file of this game. So once this is loaded into the emulator, we're going to have to type down some instructions how the emulator wants us to respond to this. So in this case for this game, I'm going to type in load. And just bear in mind with this emulator is that it's literally emulating the real Jupyter Ace computer. So it's going to be very slow. There'll be times when you're typing on it and it feels like it's crashed, but it's not. So if you type something and it doesn't appear, you understand why it's just very slow. So load graphics and then I'm going to press enter and then once we got our pixel back here at the bottom which looks like a pixel but it's cursor primitive cursor I'm going to type in GR okay and now I'm going to type in forget GR and when you go to type out these just make it very slow as you type it because it really can't keep up with fast fingers so after this, I'm going to type in load run. And now I'm simply just going to type in run. And here we go. So as you can see, it's a black and white computer. But you've got options to change the colors of this, which I'll show you shortly. So games on the Jupiter Ace aren't controllable by joystick. So this is a keyboard situation. So Z moves left and X moves right but the instructions how to use these games are going to be in the download section along with the loading instructions for each game so if you fancy a real classic experience like you're on the real machine and you don't want the desktop image in the background like I've got if you just press F4 on your keyboard this is going to take us into a full screen mode and again if we press F4 this is going to take us back to the windowed version so like I was saying just now we can actually change the color of this black and white situation if we just go to view if we just go to tools if we go to options if we go to display if we just check this out here under screen colors it will give you options so for example we can emulate a green screen if we just select that press ok we have a commodore pet looking situation going on here so lots of fun there to look at if you're into that type of thing and of course if you fancy trying your hands at a bit of programming using forth then there's programs listings on the website from where I've just downloaded this from uh, so you can start typing away and you know relive the old days if you're of a certain age and finally before I wrap up this tutorial you're going to need to save your configuration if you want it to boot back up into a bigger version rather than the 3k we need to save the configuration so if we just go to tools and save the configuration before you close it down when you open it back up it will open back up say with the 52k model so that's about it for the Jupiter Ace tutorial 
It's a great looking microcomputer which has been long forgotten to history about and these are mega rare computers to obtain. Uh, if you fancy a little whirl on it, go ahead and try it out. You might be surprised with some of the homebrew games going around on this machine which are being made here in 2023. So I'll leave that up to you and just do me a favour and hit notifications bell so whenever I upload new content you're the first to see it. And of course subscribe if you're new to the channel and of course I on Patreon I'm also on buy me a cup of coffee and I've just opened up a donate button using PayPal so if you're feeling generous for all the hard work I go through for you by all means donate using that button or the link in my description so until next time I'll see you later